Today, I'm showing you how to make full songs with the Novation Circuit tracks, including a quick look into the very small firmware update that Novation released somewhat recently that allows you to save mute states to scenes. I'll show you what that means, why it helps, all that kind of stuff. By the way, if you'd like to hear kind of the final usage of all of these techniques that I'm about to show you, like in action, check out the video that I'll link at the end of this one where I perform this entire song out live. In that case, I used two external hardware synths in addition to the circuit tracks, but I couldn't be bothered to set that up again. So we're just going to use the Roland MC-101 as its own self-contained little sound module. And I also did a video on how to connect the circuit tracks and the MC-101 for like kind of best performance because this thing works great as a little sound module with the circuit. And I will quickly just mention that in this case, MIDI 1 is controlling track 2 on the MC-101 and then MIDI 2 is controlling track 3 on the MC-101. And I've got two audio cables piped into input 1 and 2 and then I've gone in and panned this synth hard left on the MC-101 and this synth hard right on the MC-101. That way those can be piped separately into here. So for instance, I can mute this because I wanted to keep these tracks properly separate. They are summed down to mono, but for me, that's fine. Close enough, it sounds pretty good. We'll roll with it. So let's start off with the very basic building blocks. We've got our multiple tracks here. I've showed you what goes into the MIDI tracks. Here are the built-in synth tracks for context. A layer of the same main melody. And then this pad. And this pad part immediately demonstrates the first thing that is good to keep in mind when trying to make full tracks on this thing. You will probably want to have at least one of your synth parts pulling double duty, especially if you're using the circuit tracks without an external device, because it is a fully standalone device. And maybe this is your first piece of music production hardware and you can't yet afford or won't yet want to buy any other like external synths. You probably want to choose polyphonic patches when you can. You have up to six voices of polyphony, so you can use those to let a synth pull double duty, like for instance, chords and bass. And if you do that, you might want to turn the release down or chords and melody. And then maybe the other part can be just a monophonic bass or something like that. Often when working with more limited self-contained devices like this, having at least one track pull double duty will get you a lot more mileage. And it can sometimes even be like, hard to tell that one track was doing two different parts at the same time. In this case, I think these four tracks together get us a pretty full sound that we can then build on with the drums. I've got both my kick and snare on drum one. That way they are both uh, affecting the side chain. This is kind of fun. This pattern is shortened by two steps so that it's going to take quite a while before it directly repeats where this hi-hat roll is. So check this out. Adds a nice bit of variation for free, essentially. So percussion. And these percussion bits have different uh, probabilities assigned to them. Once again, more kind of variation that we basically get for free. And then some other little hi-hat bits with another bit of probability for this little tom. This is the basic construction of our track. From here, we're going to start building up our patterns. Some of this stuff is stuff that I've shown in previous tutorials or just general circuit content, but I'm going to quickly go over this just for those of you who are a bit newer. When you start a new pattern, you're going to initially start with just a one bar little piece of music. So let's just do something like dummy simple. 
And there are a few ways you can expand this. First of all, you can grow your pattern to 32 steps instead of just 16. And pro tip, if say you want it to repeat itself, but then do set like a little variation, you can hold down duplicate and then hit this button and it'll double your pattern. Whereas if you just press this, it'll start like a blank second half. And so maybe we punch in a little variation just for something really dumb. <laughs> That's not the only way that you can expand a single pattern, though. If you want a pattern to last even longer, you can slow down its speed. So go into pattern settings and these will affect the speed of your pattern, either faster than normal or slower than normal. So this is half speed and this is a quarter speed. This also works great, by the way, if you want to hold out a note longer than gate by itself will allow you to, because a single bar is as long as gate goes. So if you slow down a pattern, you could hold down a note for four times as long, which can be really nice. But of course, slowing down a pattern also means that you have like less note resolution. So getting more syncopated stuff on, say, a quarter speed is going to be pretty difficult. So keep that in mind. Tinkering with the length of your pattern is not the only way to get longer musical passages, though. You can also chain patterns together, which if you've watched some of my other circuit stuff, you're probably familiar with. So like here's one pattern. And so if I want to have a full eight bar melody, that takes four patterns chained together, each one of them being two bars long. And that goes on for a full eight bars. Same deal here with the chords. I've done that for all of these synth and MIDI tracks. And don't forget that you have a second bank of patterns for each project. So you can build up a lot of elements to construct your song with from the get go just in patterns. And if even that isn't enough or say you want a patch to swap out in the middle of a song, Stay tuned. I've got a way to do that as well and a kind of a creative hack that goes along with it. But now that we've sped run patterns, let's take a look at scenes, which are going to be kind of bigger building blocks of your song if you want to use them for that and are the only way that you get access to the rudimentary song mode on this thing. So to get to scenes, you go into your mixer and they will live here. All a scene is is a collection of patterns. And as of the latest firmware update, mute states if you want it to be. And I'll get into that in a second, but let's go over just a basic vanilla scene first. Start off with a combination of patterns that you like. So I've chained together all these and I've got all my drums active. Let me unmute all this stuff just so you can hear it. So far, so good. Go to mixer and to save that combination of patterns as a scene, hold down shift and select the place that you want to store it in. Now this lights up green because it's the one we have selected. But if I select another one, you can see it's a brighter white than these kind of dim gray pads because there's a scene living in here. So like if I pull up a blank scene by default, it just grabs the first pattern down the whole row and that's it. But if I go back to mixer and select this now, it's saved that state of all my patterns selected. So let's make another one just for the sake of example. Let me choose one that's only drums, just so it'll be a nice obvious example. Save that one. And now you can launch these like patterns. Easy peasy. I should also note that you can copy scenes around this grid. So you just hold down duplicate and drop it somewhere else. And you can chain scenes together, which is how you're going to do the song mode. So hold down the first one in the chain and then select the last one in the chain. And that's it. So now so what I would recommend doing if you want to use this as an honest to God song mode is maybe start at the end with a couple of like basic building block scenes, and then you can use duplicate to dot them around wherever you want, chain the whole thing together in order and hit play, maybe uh, tweak some filters or other audio parameters, your master filter and whatnot over time. And you've got your song. 
Now, of course, this does assume that your song is contained to only the amount of scenes that you have available. And so this is going to be fairly limited, but at least it's here. And hopefully that gets you at least most of the way there for more kind of hands off song playing on the circuit. A nice addition to this is the ability to also save mute states. Because before, if you wanted to have like one of these instrument parts be empty in a certain scene, you had to set aside an empty pattern for that. So like maybe at least one pattern is an empty pattern so that that can be like basically a placeholder. That is not the case anymore. Now you can just mute and unmute tracks on a scene by scene basis. So let me show you how that works. First of all, you may notice it's pretty hard to see, but this pad right here is like lit up, whereas these pads are just not lit up at all. You are now able to save mute states to a scene now that this is lit up. So let me just mute some stuff. And you can see it automatically turned that stuff back on because I haven't saved that to the scene yet. So once you get a configuration that you know you like, once again, hold down shift. And now that muting is saved to this. Wait for it. So hopefully that's pretty straightforward. It takes some getting used to because like if I unmute this stuff, the second I hit play, it erases it because I didn't save that scene. <laughs> so like it can be pretty frustrating. And sometimes during a jam, what I'll do is I will like disable this unless I know I need it. It's going to take some getting used to, but it's nice to have it at least. So these are going to be the main ways that you build up a song. Although for me personally, as a fairly hardcore circuit user, I really like the thing that this thing is very like live performance and kind of like DJ performance oriented. And so I like to launch stuff live as much as possible. So usually I will like swap patterns like on the fly as much as I can. So for instance, if I pull this back up, I'll mute and unmute stuff on the fly. I'll do uh, pattern switching on the fly and I'll use scenes when I need a bigger change to happen that I like physically can't pull off by just selecting patterns. Like for instance, if I want to bring in multiple synth parts at a time or I'll use them in conjunction with muting and unmuting. I will sometimes even just turn elements up and down occasionally. And of course, I'll do stuff like tweak a filter cutoff over time to create more long term variation to keep a song interesting and keep it moving and keep the energy level ebbing and flowing at a nice pace. Now, we have still done this inside of one project, but let's say that you want a bigger change to happen than scenes can pull off. Like, for instance, having an entire patch swap out midway through the song or maybe go into just like a very, very different section. You can do that with project switching. So check this out. Let me uh, do a quick save as of this project, which you do by just selecting a new slot to save stuff into, by the way. Let me unmute all this stuff. This is a completely separate project from the other one with like a different musical idea. So we've got this one. And we've got this one. All I have to do is switch between these as if they are patterns while everything is playing. Check this out. And vitally, the project that you're switching to will at least temporarily take on the tempo of the project that you're switching from. So let's say that I switched to this like drum and bass tempo project. It's kind of a mess, but you get the idea uh, from this project. Listen to what happens. It slowed it way the hell down. But then if I get out of this, it still like retains its original tempo if I play it just starting cold. This is incredibly useful for a few reasons. First of all, like I mentioned, it lets you uh, enact bigger changes instantly than scenes will let you get, including, for instance, the ability to switch to like a big built up portion of a song when you've been spending a bunch of time like building it up and breaking it down. Here's what I mean. 
So I have been pretty strategic in the way I set up this song. I have this project right here where it starts with everything muted except for the pad. This is my starting point. So I'll build it up piece by piece over the course of the jam. I'll unmute the melody. I'll launch the bass. And I've spent like all this time letting these elements build over time. And then I switch to my B section. That other separate project with that new chord progression that I showed you. And then I want to go back to what is basically my chorus. But remember, this is everything muted at the start to start off the song. That's why I have this separate project where everything is already kicked in. So this particular song idea with its A section that builds up over time, a B section that builds up, and then we go back into the full on A section takes three projects to do. And I've set that up pretty strategically. And of course, you could take this as far as you want. You could build up an entire set doing this, complete with like tempo changes as stuff is playing, which is pretty powerful and a lot of fun. And in fact, it's one of my favorite creative things on this for songwriting is the fact that like this project and this one started off as two completely separate musical ideas that I didn't originally consider joining together until I like had just built up a bunch of musical ideas and then noticed, hey, these sound fairly similar. What if I made sure that they were in the same key, put them at the same tempo and made sure that they would sound nice side by side? That basically gave me my song. Just me noticing that these two separate patterns might work well together and then kind of like modifying them both to match each other a bit better. This is one of the only devices where I find myself doing that kind of creative process of like mashing two song ideas together. And it's because of project switching that it's like taught me to think like that. And it can make turning little musical ideas into full songs feel kind of effortless because like you've already done the hard work of coming up with a bunch of musical ideas. Now you can use project switching to figure out a way to kind of join them together, which is really neat. I should also mention for project switching, if you hit like panic mode and realize, oh, I needed to change to this sooner or I need to change to this other thing right now, you can hold down shift and select the project and it'll just switch to it instantly. Check this out. So that's a really nice like emergency switch over technique. Hold down shift, select the project that you need to switch to in a hurry. If you'd like a real world example of how all this looks in practice, you can check out this video up over here. Hopefully it gives you a pretty good idea of how all this stuff gets implemented to really build up a full song. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.